All right. Well, hopefully we'll see some people joining soon. Sorry for the delay, everyone. Um, bit of a time zone confusion on my part. Um, I thought they meant uh, 6.30 uh, Central Time, not uh, Eastern Time. Um, just give people a few moments to filter their way in. And um, yeah, then we'll get going. Uh, two seconds. Hopefully everyone's having a good night. Um, it is currently raining up a storm here in Chicago and very cloudy out. So kind of matches the mood of the coronavirus quarantine we have going on now. Um, but yeah, uh, seeing some people coming in, Men uh, Megan, uh, Benoit, I'm assuming you're French. Uh, I remember you doing your colorization things. If I mispronounce your name, sorry about that, but hello. Um, just give it a little bit longer. All right. Okay. Seems like we have some people in. So let's get started. Um, how did I become a, or how did I become interested in the Civil War? Well, that started from a fairly young age. Um, I want to say, uh, probably since I could honestly walk. Um, as some of you may or may not know, my uh, uncle's actually Carl Sundstrom. And if any of you have had any dealings with him, you know he's very big into the Civil War. He collects 11th Corps stuff. So whenever as a child I was walking around his house, it would be kind of opening up into this variable museum, you know, seeing Springfield muskets up on the walls, all these memorial um, roster sheets, um, uh, World War One trench art, just all this stuff all over the place. So that's kind of how I got my start in the Civil War, like why I started liking it. Um, originally, I was in the uh, pre-med fields, but um, that changed very quickly uh, once I uh, started taking organic chemistry and I realized that it wasn't for me and I did a bit of soul searching and I realized my deep love for history, and eventually uh, the Civil War. Now, even though I started getting interested in the Civil War in the 90s, you know, when I was a kid, in the early 2000s, I actually didn't start collecting until, I would say, um, about 2006. And the first image I ever got was when I went to the Wheaton Civil War show, I want to say in September, and... Um, I picked up this image right here. Let me get a zoom in on this. So this man right here is First Lieutenant Joseph Hartsook of the 55th Illinois. Uh, evening, Jason, Megan, everyone. Um, he, uh, like I said, First Sergeant of the 55th Illinois. And he was wounded at the Battle of Kennesaw Mountain, became very kind of involved in the 55th uh, Illinois' um, reunion efforts, Grand Army of the Republic. Um, and I'll just flip him over, get you a bit of the back. Someone was very nice to inscribe all this information for me on the back side. But that was my first image that I started collecting with the Civil War and just so happened to be uh, the first image of the regiment I collect, which is the 55th Illinois. Now, why the 55th Illinois? Um, I just kind of uh, stumbled on it. I, I, when I started getting into the Civil War, I asked my uncle, uh, Carl, I asked him, you know, what are some good regiments? And he kind of laughed at me and said, well, you know, what do you mean? There's a lot of them. And I said, well, wh what are some good Civil War Illinois regiments? And he said, well, the 55th Illinois is a pretty good one. 
So from there, I start collecting the 55th Illinois. Um, it's the biggest part of my collection. I also collect other Illinois regiments, such as the 74th Illinois, the 4th Illinois Cavalry, and as well as um, other kind of various random Illinois regiments. Um, but my main focus is the 55th. Um, also known as Cannon's Rifles. They uh, took part in a lot of the heaviest fighting of the Civil War. They were pretty much with General uh, William Tecumseh Sherman throughout the war, uh, being part of his division at the Battle of Shiloh. Um, they, along with the 54th and 71st Ohio, anchored the extreme left flank of the Union line at Shiloh, um, where they took horrendous casualties, over 200 for about, I think, 500 men fielded. Uh, someone will probably um, correct me on that. I don't have the exact numbers on me right now. Um, but yeah, let me show off some of my other 55th Illinois images I've collected over the years. Um, just some of my personal favorites. Um, one thing I do like to collect is nice ink signatures. So this is one of my favorites. Um, James uh, Hefferman of the 55th Illinois Major. You can see he signed real nicely at the bottom. Uh, real interesting guy. Um, clear shots. Um, I like how you can see very clearly the woodworking for the back of the chair. Um, served the entire war. Uh, eventually he became a mine inspector. And he went down to Cuba to kind of help out... Um, what was the, um, at the time, the Spanish governments, you know, work their minds, kind of figure out how it's going on. He comes back to America, specifically New Orleans. Then he um, contracts malaria and while he's coming back up to Chicago, and he will pass away in St. Louis, where um, he died unknown. He was buried in a pauper's grave, and it took his wife about five years to find him, and then uh, she brought him back home to Chicago. So one day I do hope to find where he's buried and maybe try to get a picture of his grave and his image. Um, I also have a thing for hats at jaunty angles. So as you can see, his hat's pretty much falling off his head. So that's another thing that I like as well. Um, some, some of the early days of collecting for me were interesting because... You know, they happened when I was young. You know, I was a kid. Um, oh, hi there, Mike. Um, and, you know, being bright-eyed and new, you know, people, I sometimes feel like they took... No, I don't want to say pity, but um, they, they were like a new kid. Let's help them out. So I had a lot of people who helped me through the years um, in my uh, collecting. Uh, Randy Beck... Um, uh, who else? My Uncle Carl, obviously. Um, Mike Medhurst. Um, let me see. Uh, Alan Sebula. Um, just, uh, just kind of a whole plethora of people throughout my time that I've kind of grown up with and uh, I now consider some of my good friends. Um, another image I wanted to show off for the 55th Illinois that kind of combines two of my favorite things. Once again, nice ink signature. And, but this time you actually can see a um, 15th Corps badge on his chest. Um, his name is Azel B. Shoop. A uh, very interesting name. Um... Not, not much to his story. He was a private, served the entire war with the 55th Illinois, mustered out, uh, I believe, in Little Rock or D.C. I don't know if he was part of the Grand Review um, portion of the 55th Illinois. Um, then kind of just fades into obscurity. But I just like it. It's just a nice kind of clean image, and you don't see too many of those 15th Corps badge badges and images because these those badges weren't really issued until I want to say 
early spring of 65, so there were many uh, uh, images taken with them. Uh, another. Do I have a connection with any of the regiments I collect? I actually do not. Um, my family is fairly young when it comes to America, um, mostly coming here in the 1920s and 30s. Um, there is one side of my family that came here uh, during or before the American Civil War, uh, the Irish side of my family, and they um, fought or one ancestor fought with the 6th Pennsylvania Cavalry, also known as Rush's Lancers. He was the uh, commissary sergeant of um, Company... Oh, God. <laughs> uh, Company uh, K. Um, and he was captured at the Battle of Brandy Station, so as the 6th Pennsylvania is charging those guns, the Confederate guns... Uh, he was dehorsed, um, captured, and sent down to uh, Belle Isle as a prisoner. And uh, he would eventually be paroled back, and he would uh, muster out in December of 1864. Um, recently, I actually got to visit uh, Brandy Station when I was an intern at Fredericksburg and Spotsylvania National Military Park. Uh, Really great battlefields, uh, really nice. Um, I visited the Graffiti House, which was this really nice little museum where people uh, who were fighting in the Civil War uh, basically drew on the walls. Um, really nice little museum, because it's, it's interesting seeing the back and forth, because the house changed hands so many times that, um, you know, there would be a Confederate saying, oh, well, we whipped you Yankees at X battle, and then you would see written underneath it, well, we just ripped you, uh, we just whipped you Rebs at Gettysburg. And it was kind of funny seeing the back and forth. And um, they do have one section of the wall there where descendants of people who were at those various battles um, at Brandy Station could sign their names. So I signed my name and uh, my uncle uh, for um, uh, my great-great-grandfather. Um We'll just uh, kind of keep on going with the 55th Illinois. Um, another image I have, it is a copy of a hard image right here of Squire Austin Wright. Now, if you subscribe to uh, Military Images Magazine, uh, you will see that um, uh, this is a familiar image because he was part of that um, kind of expose of images. Um, he was a teacher in uh, Michigan, right along the uh, coast of um, Lake Michigan. And he would come to Chicago, sign up with the 55th Illinois. He became a captain, and his first battle was the Battle of Shiloh. And during the Battle of Shiloh, he was actually um, shot two or three times. And those wounds pro uh, proved to be mortal, and he would pass away about a month, uh, about a month and a few days uh, in uh, Illinois, and then he would be uh, transported back to Michigan where he would be buried. And where this image comes from, as you can see by the revenue tax stamp, it's obviously taken after uh, August um, 1864. It was a copy of a hard image for his, what I'm assuming his half brother, M.B. Uh, Hopkins. Um, but yeah, one of one, one of my more favorite images, not so much for the pose itself, but for the backstory and the fact that he was the 55th Illinois' um, highest ranking casualty during the Battle of Shiloh. And you can see Ron actually uh, just posted the link to that uh, specific magazine. I would check it out. It's pretty cool. And I'm not saying that because I'm in the magazine. No. But what is my favorite image? My favorite image is actually kind of an unassuming one. Um, I'll put it up right now.
zoom in a little bit. So, this is my favorite image. Not the best image. Uh, you know, it's a little bit faded. It has some tearing right down here near his hands. But what makes it my favorite image is the fact that this image comes from the personal collection of the Colonel of the 55th Illinois. Um, how I know that is, well, uh, through a chain of provenance that the album came out of Sweden and uh, was sold to a collector, I'm assuming here in America, who broke it up and sold it off in pieces. But right here in the back, mid-19th century Swedish. Now, I have um, a few friends uh, in Sweden who uh, speak Swedish, and um, they tell me that there is actually a pretty big difference between mid-19th century Swedish and modern Swedish. But from what they gave me, this translation is a former soldier of my regiment who was shot across the face. Um, he was shot across the face. This photo was taken at Camp Douglas by D.F. Brandon. So I did some digging and through uh, basically figuring out when did Camp Douglas turn into a prisoner of war camp, which was December of 1862. And who was shot in the head area and lived from the 55th Illinois roster rolls came down to three names at the Battle of Shiloh. And from there, I was able to pare it down. Well, one man was way too old. He was in his late 30s. This is obviously a, a young man. Uh, the other one had the wrong hair color. So I came about and figured out that this is George Blas of the 55th Illinois. As you can see right here, his face is puckered from where he was shot. Now, Blas continued to serve with the 55th Illinois, and he uh, even popped up in a little story where when he, uh, when he and the regiments were in North Carolina in the final leg of Sherman's uh, little journey down south, he uh, came across a house, a mansion of a uh, local Confederate guerrilla leader, and the... Uh, ladies of the house were calling the Yankees savages and they wouldn't even know how to play a piano and this young man here with his long brown hair face puckered from being shot walked up to the piano and played it better than any of the ladies could ever hope to play and from there he survived the war and he disappeared I can't make hide or tail of him but this is one of my favorite images because of its connection to the 55th Illinois and the research I put into it figuring out who this is. Um, uh, Doc Krause also kind of helped me out with this one too. Um, so I got to give some credit to him as well. Um, but that's my favorite image. What do I search for when I collect... That's a good question. Um, I've already kind of talked about it earlier. I, I like nice signatures. I like I like it when hats are worn differently. I like it just kind of odd images. Um, I also obviously collect the regiments that I collect. So one uh, so one of the regiments I collect that has the a different hat is. This one, right here, William McDermott of the 4th Illinois Cavalry. He has an unusual hat, the Scottish Tam, which you don't see super often um, outside of, I believe, the 12th Illinois Infantry, as well as a few others. Um, but... Gorgeous ink signature on the back. Now, the 4th Illinois Cavalry is one of my more smaller collections. I would say I only have about four or five images that are part of that collection. 
But I do have some, in my opinion, I think, nice ones. And this is probably one of my favorites right here. W.H. Cheney of the 4th Illinois Cavalry. Um, 8th plate tintype. Um, it's actually my first tintype that I own of a soldier. I own a few other tintypes. They're mainly uh, hunters and their dogs. But um, this one really spoke to me, A, because it's a regiment I collect, and B, uh, well, I mean, look at it. It's cool. Full sta He's standing, has a sword out his side, he has a pistol tucked in his belt. Um, nice tinting on the drapes to his right. So, definitely one of my uh, favorite uh, images. Normally I don't collect hard images, and that's uh, mainly due to circumstance. I am a, uh, a graduate student right now. I'm getting my master's in public history. So whatever money I do have, it ends up going to uh, the Jesuits at Loyola Chicago. So I don't have a whole bunch of money. But if I come across nice images, I, I try to I try to purchase them. Like this one, no connection to Illinois at all, as far as I can tell. Uh, but the thing that drew me to uh, this uh, Ambro type is the fact that it looks like Ron Swanson uh, from Parks and Recreation or uh, Nick Offerman, uh, whichever uh, way you know him. I picked up this image. Uh, shoot, uh, a couple like a, like a month or so ago from Jeff McArdle. Uh, yeah, Andrew, I did get I did get Ron Swanson. I've been kind of waiting to show them off. I finally found a good time to do it. But yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully this uh, soldier, much like Ron Swanson, liked uh, bacon and uh, steak. <laughs> In addition to other, the three regiments I uh, stated earlier, I do end up collecting just Illinois images that kind of speak to me. So this one right here. Walter Tibbetts of the 1st Illinois Light Artillery Battery I. Um, what drew me to him is, well, he's an artilleryman. Don't see too many of those. He was wounded, and... The unusual backdrop, which you guys uh, may have seen a few, uh, a few of, uh, a few of you may have seen this earlier because I posted asking where this, if anyone knew where this backdrop came from, I, I still don't know. Um, most likely, this isn't a Benton Barracks um, backdrop because he was only in two places before the Battle of Shiloh, where he was wounded and then eventually discharged. So I'm assuming this is somewhere in Chicago. Um, he was wounded at the Battle of Shiloh when uh, Battery I came up to the Peach Orchard and exchanged fire with an Alabamian artillery unit, as well as a Washington artillery unit, um, along with, I believe, the 53rd Ohio. Um, I, You know, Charles, I, I do hope my uncle's proud. Um, one reason why, I, uh, another reason why I collect uh, Western stuff is when I was younger, um, I said to myself, if I try to collect Eastern theater stuff, I'm not going to be able to keep up with my uncle because, you know, he has a he has he has money, and I'm a kid. I don't have money, so a uh, little funny story. And uh, yep, Ron just posted another link. Y'all should check that out. Now, probably one of my favorite ink signatures right now is this one. Fazil A. Harrington of the 27th uh, Illinois Infantry. Um, now, he has the distinction of being, I believe, a colonel for only one battle, and that was the Battle of Stones River. Uh, where when he was leading a counter charge of the 27th Illinois, he um, 
happened to catch a uh, cannonball to the jaw, and it, depending on who you ask, some people say that he was killed instantly. Um, others say he, uh, other sources stated he lived for about 12, 18 hours before he passed away the next day. Uh, I personally hope it was the former. Um, but... That signature is probably my favorite thing about this image. It's just nice, it's flowing, gives information, it just it just looks nice. And that's one thing I look for when I'm collecting. Now, future plans as a collector... Um, keep on collecting 55th, 74th, and 4th Illinois images. That is that is my big plans for the future. Um, I also collect uh, paper. That is uh, another ephora that's related to um, the various regiments I collect. For instance, um, I can't really show it uh, here just because my setup's not right for it, but I got the uh, commission paperwork for the lieutenant colonel of the 55th Illinois, the same Swede who owns that image of George Blas. So, and I also own the paperwork written by the, the surgeon of the, 50, of the 55th Illinois, attesting to the injuries that that same colonel uh, sustained on the May 19th and May 22nd assaults at Vicksburg, where he was shot once right about here, glancing blow on his, uh, le his left eye. And then on the May 22nd assault, he was shot once again near the right eye. And those two uh, uh, wounds actually caused him to go blind just shortly after the end of the war. And I have the paperwork attesting to those injuries for him asking for a pension from the federal government. Um, just a few more images I kind of want to show off because I, I think they're fun. They're unusual. Um, this one image is another 55th Illinois is of Henry Jocelyn. And for me, it's just unusual and I like it because of the tinting. Um, he has the uh, bow tie that is uh, tinted pink. And hopefully you can see it in the, uh, the picture, but his eyes are actually tinted blue. Uh, it's not something I've seen in CDVs before. Um, Jocelyn, interesting guy. He was one of Sherman's bummers. Uh, so as, you know, Sherman's doing his march to the sea, he was the one gathering the uh, food and the materials for the 55th Illinois and the various other regiments. Um, one point, uh, his little bands got overrun by some of Wheeler's cavalry and to buy his people some extra time. He apparently ran up to the Confederate captain, grabbed the reins of his horse and, uh, horse and basically said, what the hell are you guys doing? You're shooting, uh, you're shooting uh, Confederates to try to trick them, which evidently bought them enough time to escape and get back to the uh, main body of the regiments. But nothing special on the back. See, I'm trying, I'm trying to think of, if, if any of you have any questions, you know, feel free to ask. Um, you know, I'm more, more than happy to uh, answer them. Um, little extra bits about me. Um, you know, I'm getting my master's in public history. Um, trying to uh, work for the National Park Service as a uh, park ranger. Um, like I said, I was a... Uh, interpreter park ranger at Fredericksburg in Spotsylvania over the summer. Who knows, some of you may have met me. I was at the Battle of Fredericksburg, and I was at Spotsylvania as well. Um, but yeah, uh, I've been collecting for a while. I still, have, I still have a few more images, so hopefully I haven't uh, bored any of you yet. Uh, this was also one of my first images I collected, and... It was one of the images, actually it was the image that got me started on the 74th Illinois. Um, 
Which park would I choose to work at, Doug? Um, Vicksburg or Shiloh? That 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 would be my guess. Uh, I know, and I uh, I know um, Shiloh is is kind of out there in the middle of nowhere, but I think that would be a real fun to, one to work at. Uh, Vicksburg would also be fun because the fifty fifth Illinois played a prominent role in both of those uh, engagements. Um, but here we go, John Beetson right there. As you can tell, nice ink signature on the bottom. Uh, for me, and it's just. It's just a cool image. I mean, he has his um, officer rigging. Uh, he has, you know, his, hol his uh, holstered pistol at his side. He has a very Western hat, Western theater hat hanging in his hands. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just one of my, I don't know. It's just, for me, it's like, it's just these, these attachments to these images. Um, you know, nothing, nothing, once again, nothing super special. On the back. Now, another image, one that I've been kind of hunting for a while, was actually sold to me uh, by none other than Doug York. Um, Doug, you might remember this, but it is a cabinet card, and Doug had it listed as um, F.H. Shaw, and he was saying it could be a relative of, you know, Francis uh, Gould Shaw of, um, you know, 54th Massachusetts uh, Glory. And I immediately looked at that image, and a million alarm bells started ringing in my head. And I'm like, oh my god, I actually know who this is, and I've been searching for an image of him for years now. And... F.H. Shaw, Francis H. Shaw, more specifically Captain Francis H. Shaw, Company C, 55th Illinois. Um, wounded multiple times, including at the Battle of Shiloh. Um, even though this is a cabinet card, he still has his officer rigging, which is very evident. Sitting on the table next to him, he carries a cane, maybe due to the... Uh, uh, injuries he sustained at the Battle of Shiloh, but he just had one of those faces where as soon as I saw it, I'm like, that's him. So had to had to pick that one up. And um, the plan is, I actually have his company's memorial roster, which is already framed up. And I want to get this picture framed so I can hang them together, as well as I have... Um, his uh, honorable discharge papers because in 1864, everyone's favorite teetotaler, uh, General O.O. O. Howard, ordered the 55th Illinois to go up and uh, start attacking the uh, Confederates when the 55th Illinois had already been fighting all day and barely had a bullet for a man. So they were down to literally about 150 bullets for the regiments, even though there were multiple fresh regiments right next to them. And Shaw, basic, uh, Shaw asked the Brigadier General, he's like, are you sure General Howard wants us to do this? There are fresh regiments right next to us. Um, and the General went back to Howard and then came back and drummed Francis H. Shaw out of service with a dishonorable discharge. Took about 23 years until I believe 1888, and an act of Congress to honorably uh, discharge Francis H. Shaw. And I have um, a copy of the paperwork uh, of the congressional order um, uh, reversing that dishonorable discharge by Howard. So just kind of through happenstance, I've been getting like little mini collections here and there, like I stated earlier, um, I have the 55th Illinois collection for Colonel uh, Malborg, and now I have a little mini collection going for Francis H. Shaw. Uh, I still am looking for a wartime image of Shaw, so if you ever happen to come across one, please uh, shoot me a private message uh, on Facebook. Uh, 
yeah, so I'm, I'm actually really I'm looking for that one. Uh, trying to see if I missed any other questions. Mm -mm 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 -mm. No, actually, I think I answered all those questions. Um, that's kind of a brief uh, synopsis of my collection. Uh, like I said, I mainly collect Illinois. Uh, Western Theater, Illinois. Um, I will gladly state every day of the week that I believe the Western Theater was the most important theater of the Civil War. Um, I know that's going to earn me a lot of uh, boos and hisses, but uh, I still stand by it. Um, definitely earned me some uh, some uh, goffs and laughs out of Fredericksburg and Spotsylvania. Um, <laughs> but that's my collection. It's still a small one. Uh, I, it's not as nice as some of the other ones out there, like uh, uh, Charles Joyce's. Uh, um, you were talking about your Gettysburg casualties. Um, that that's not as nice as a collection like that, but um, it's not as nice of a collection as Kevin's, who did last week's show. But this one's mine, and I thoroughly enjoy it. And I hope you all enjoyed my little tour of it. Uh, I wanted to thank uh, Ron and Doug and the Civil War. Uh, uh, collector, photograph collector society for kind of, you know, putting on the show, helping us out. Um, especially during these times of quarantines and lockdowns, I definitely know I'm a little bit stir crazy being stuck inside all day. I assuming everyone else is. So hopefully, you know, these little insights into everyone's collections can help alleviate some of that boredom. Uh, otherwise, if you have any questions about my collection or for me in general, you know, feel free to shoot me a private message, make a comment. Um, but yeah, I hope everyone has a good day, has a good weekend. It's still, uh, still, uh, still night. I'm or still dinner time, not nights. Uh, so I hope everyone has a good dinner and I, you know, hope to talk to you all soon.